Good morning. Welcome to church on this snowy January morning. It's great to be here together. Welcome to ERUCC, where no matter who you are or where you are on life or faith's journey, you are welcome here. By way of announcements, we'd like to, to thank everyone for the support and prayers for our team that traveled to Franklinton Center at Bricks last weekend. During fellowship today, we will hear reflections from some of those who participated, including our youth. We hope you will come and listen and ask questions about the service that we did, the stories we heard, and the lessons we learned. And while you're down there today, you can pick up a sub-sales form to continue to support our youth. Next Sunday, we will formally celebrate our newly established relationship with Dr. Morgan by hosting a special service of blessing for our interim journey. This worship service will be here in the sanctuary and also streamed live. It will be at 3 p.m. and we'll have a reception afterwards in the community room. Please continue to pray for those listed on our prayer list in your bulletins. Please also pray for Mark Ulrich and his medical team as Mark prepares for a spinal surgery tomorrow. He'll be recovering for home, at home for at least two weeks, and we've set up a meal train for Mark and Daryl. So you can contact either Kelly or the church office if you'd like to be added to the notices to help with meals. And that goes for all of our meal trains. Kelly is the person that we're very thankful that organizes those for us. We're praying for Mary Remsburg, who is back in the hospital, possibly for a couple of days for tests. And we lift up prayers of comfort for Glenn Wallace White, his husband Jim, and their family, as Glenn's mother Esther, but lovingly known as Marie, passed peacefully on Monday morning. And we also extend prayers to Sandy Gray and her wife Danielle and their family, as Sandy's mother Edna passed away on Thursday morning. I now invite you to stand and wave to those worshiping with us online, welcome to you as well, and to greet those around you.
Will you please stand with me as you're able and share to the call, in the call to worship? Everlasting God, our soul wait for you. Everlasting God, our souls wait for you. Everlasting God, our souls wait for you. We pray with me, God of many seasons, we enter your presence with joy and thanksgiving. We acknowledge all the ways that you meet us as we gather in your name. May our songs and prayers be a sweet sound in your ears. May we demonstrate our trust in you through both praise and lament. May our hearts yearn, our spirits stir, and our souls wait in holy hope and expectation. Amen. Friends, let us confess our sins before God and this host of witnesses. Holy God, we cons we have become used to instant gratification and have forgotten the holiness of waiting. Help us to rest in your timing. Encourage us to persevere through struggles and storms Reveal the unfolding of your kingdom before our eyes and empower us to be agents of transformation to infuse us with new life. Amen. Beloved, <clears throat> while we wait, we have grace to love fully, pursue liberty, 
and seek a just world. The Holy God has given us the blueprint and invitation to the path of new life. Follow Jesus with grace and truth. Please be seated. So I invite any other young friends or young at heart friends to come forward for our thought for the day. Thank you so much for sharing that song and testimony this morning. So in church today, we're going to hear two scriptures. Um, one of them is Jesus telling some of the disciples, come and follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Does that sound familiar to anybody? A couple, couple of us? Okay. Um, there's another scripture we're going to read, and it's in which Jonah is told by God to go to Nineveh and give a message. All right? That might also seem familiar to you. Our elementary class had a Bible story today. What was that this morning? What was your Bible story? It was a wild one. It was, what? Lots. And what happened? Yeah, so this is the story of, we, it's, it's talked about as many demons, many legions, and God did what? 
Yes, yeah, so God put them in pigs, right? Took them out of the person and put them in passing by pigs, right? And so in each of these stories, there's a big problem, and God or Jesus is really specific in giving an answer, right? Wouldn't that be great? That's a very, very big gift in life, right? And, and so in each of these stories, as God or Jesus gives a direction, God takes care of the people, right? So sometimes in our lives, um, we teach ourselves to be independent thinkers and to be independently strong, right? We just do that a lot, right? And so when we have challenges in our life, when we have a really hard test to study for, when we have something that's a new skill that we're trying to learn, like in baseball or in band or in gymnastics, and it's really hard, right? When we have a fight with a friend, when we have a family member that dies, often we have the practice and we teach each other to ask the question, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right? And we sit sometimes feeling powerless with that question. Well, I want to remind you today and to remind me today to pray and then do. Pray first and then do. In each of our stories, people were taken care of because they, they heard from God what to do, right? And so while God can and sometimes does speak directly to us when we pray, God also speaks in many, many different ways. So we want to pray first and then do. Can you repeat that with me? Pray first and then do. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Go up, 
Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. And today's New Testament lesson is Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee and proclaimed the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come, has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I believe I have one of the greatest jobs in the world to be able to begin one's week. Um, and I believe it is more Monday morning than Sunday evening to begin thinking about and reflecting on a section of scripture. A, uh, we call it in theological seminary, a pericope, a passage that might be expounded upon in the presence of a congregation that will not be a waste of their time. And uh, for 51 years now, I have lived my weeks increasingly anxious as Sunday morning approaches because I, I heard that one professor in a preaching course say, if people are gonna get up in the mornings on a Sunday morning and to come to worship, expecting your sermon to be a part of that worship, don't waste their time and uh, I confess I've wasted folks' time a few times. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, we might have spent some time today talking about Jonah. We might have spent some time talking about the calling of uh, Simon and Andrew, James and John. But there are some words that sort of we say jumped off the page for me this week. And they were just read meaningfully for us. Did you hear the first phrase of that gospel text? After John was arrested. After John was arrested. That phrase sets the rest of the text in a proper context. It was not while John was uh, preaching in the wilderness. It was not while John was baptizing in the Jordan. 
But the text says to all of us, after John was arrested. I don't know about you, but I've begun to pay closer attention when people get arrested. And I suspect part of that is because of my own experiences of getting arrested. Um, some of you know that I am adam uh, strongly opposed to capital punishment. I think we've made too many mistakes of killing people uh, and then discovering that they were really innocent after all. And uh, one experience that stands out for me was that of Troy Davis in the state of Georgia. People from around the world responded to that case. And um, the day before he was executed, I remember making telephone calls to about five or six colleagues in ministry. <clears throat> One of them said, Morgan, I, I don't quite have the, I told the colleagues that I was going to um, uh, engage in some acts of disobedience and uh, uh, allow someone to chain my body to the flagpole outside the state capitol in Georgia. And so the colleagues said, I don't have the energy for that anymore. He said, can't you do something simpler? And uh, I had spoken to my wife, spoke to my children, so they would not be surprised if they would read a news report. And I didn't tell them the whole story, because at the end of the day, my wife said, Marvin, you didn't tell me you were going to offer to die for Troy Davis. And uh, I told her, no, because you would have talked me out of it. <laughs> and uh, there was something about getting arrested <clears throat> on that day, being carried off alone that time rather than with the group. There was something about that that felt lonelier than any of the other times when I have been arrested because of civil disobedience. And so my perceptions, my body, my nerves tend to react a little differently these days when I hear of or witness an arrest after John was arrested. We read the news stories, did we not? Of Eric Garner in New York being arrested and then killed by the police who arrested him. Do we not recall Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, being arrested, <clears throat> or in the process of being arrested and killed by the police? More out of their fear <clears throat> than anything else. Or Freddie Gray, right here in Baltimore, being arrested and killed by the officers who arrested him. Breonna Taylor, in her own home, being killed by the police who entered her home. And we do not even need 
to mention the name of George Floyd. And then place in between those few names, dozens of other names, mostly of black men in the process of being arrested discovering that they were breathing their last breaths. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Ladies and gentlemen, there's not enough time to read all of the names. We would be here until the afternoon. I might lose my job if I would try to read all of the names. Men, boys, women, in the process of being arrested and killed by the police instead. And so, when I looked at that gospel text, I found that I could not read beyond that opening phrase. There's something about that phrase that stopped me in my tracks. Have you noticed when driving along the highway or the city streets. <clears throat> when someone is being arrested, drivers will slow down. They want to know who's being arrested or how the person who's being arrested is going to be treated. Arrest after John was arrested. Evangelical Reform UCC, there's a sense in which we were all arrested. How dare you be a radically open and inviting and welcoming congregation? Whole lot of preachers down in Texas would point their finger at you because you dare to be open and affirming, because you dare to call a preacher not on the basis of the color of their skin, but on their work record. How dare you do such a thing? When John was arrested, all of us were stopped in our tracks. And because of that arrest, a movement was ended. The timing to end the movement was consistent with God's will or it would not have happened. But after John was arrested, humankind was devastated. Here was a man who had been preaching repentance and redemption from the least to the greatest among us. Messages of repentance in our current day sometimes includes people wanting you to move from one faith group to another, but that was not the case with John. John was simply calling people to come home, to return to the covenant of justice and Mercy. He was inviting them 
to come home. Now, I was not able to be with you during the Advent season, most recent Advent season, but did you not hear in those Advent messages delivered by the skillful clergy who are part of this congregation, did we not hear their call to us to identify with that baby born and laid in a manger, a call for us to recommit ourselves to the faith? And then after John's arrest, that was a short period of time when folk really didn't know where home was. But then they remembered John's message. John said, I'm not the one who, uh, whom you're looking for, but there's one coming after me. I am not even worthy to untie his sandals or his shoes. The good news that we would point to today is that God has this way of coming into our lives and standing in those gaps when hope has died, and we proclaim in the Negro National Anthem, when hope unborn has died. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lack of hope. When hope unborn has already died. Don't you know the families of Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Freddie Gray, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. Those families were filled with hope that their loved ones might live out their lives and make a meaningful contribution to the world in which we live. But no, a few police officers decided that that was not to be the case. When John was arrested, it ended a movement and left a gap. But then by revisiting John's message, what people discovered, and it was as true, it is as true for us as it was for them. They discovered that John had already proclaimed for their hearing who would fill the gap. Now here we are. Uh, a congregation that happens to be in the middle of an interim journey. Some will sense the gap greater than others. Some will sense the loss greater than others. But we know who will stand in that gap. And like John, I'm not talking about your interim pastor. I'm talking about the person God has already prepared for you to serve as your next settled pastor. God knows already who will step into that gap and serve this congregation as it claims its future. And I suspect as good as the prior days have been, the best days in the life of this congregation are yet to be experienced. They are yet to be seen. When I look upon you and talk with you, 
have a cup of coffee with you. I was doing that this morning with some of the gentlemen downstairs. And, uh, and I said, uh, look, I have to go now because some of us have to work on Sundays. <laughs> so, so I ended my part of that conversation. But as I get to know one person after another, the greatest days of this congregation, did you not see it among the children as they sang? Among the children as they listened, mostly attentively, <laughs> to the thought for the day. Uh, the greater days in this, the life of this congregation are yet before us. But look at the text again. One cannot move beyond the opening phrase of that gospel lesson and dismiss what is there after John was arrested. Some of us will have to give some extraordinary time to step into that future. Some of us will have to stretch ourselves a bit we would have to stretch ourselves a bit to restore the, um, I want to use the right language. I should not say, I should say clock tower. Uh, but we'll have to stretch ourselves. But ladies and gentlemen, it can be done. It can be done. And, and I will end with this next comment. There's an interim where a congregation had neglected uh, uh, to maintain their building, not unlike what you've already gone through. And they had a capital campaign in the middle of the interim. Their goal was to raise $500,000, but in 12 months, they raised in excess of $640,000. Those were not pledges, but those were gifts that came into that congregation. And they dared to do it in the middle of an interim. And there's some, some of my friends who will suggest you don't do that in an interim. Ladies and gentlemen, the body of Christ is the body of Christ, whether in an interim period or not. After John was arrested, Jesus began to proclaim the good news, the very good news of the gospel. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us look to God in prayer. Eternal God, one situation after another has a way of coming into our lives. For one, it might be bereavement at the loss of a family member. For another, it is the uncertain news surrounding a medical diagnosis. And for another, it is the anxiety surrounding the lives of children, adult children, who may be struggling to meet the obligations of their families. For another, there may be an internal struggle with their faith. They don't know whether to remain a part of this organized religion or to do something different. And so there is that internal 
pool, and for some, a break with the church. But dear God, we give you thanks for so ordering our lives that we continue to find meaning and purpose in gathering for worship, in being a part of a community of faith a community of faith that dares to be inclusive, that dares to care about others. Thank you, dear God, for those positive experiences in our lives. Thank you for reminding us that it was after John was arrested that people of faith really began to learn and more fully understand how you revealed yourself to us in Jesus the Christ. Be with this congregation, be with all churches that are planted by your hands and grant us the ability to be the body of Christ. These blessings we ask in your many names. Amen. Our community and world rely upon the generosity of those who have received the Creator's abundance. Let us offer our gifts in the knowledge that some have no other choice but to wait on us to act, to share, and to give.
we invite those who are able to please stand for the prayer of dedication. <clears throat> to get, reading together, eternal God, magnify the gifts we give to gratitude and for your glory. Amen. May the grace of God, the hope of God, and the communion of God rest and abide in you and shine through you as you live lives of service in the world. May we say together, amen. <laughs> 